Hello, welcome to Breadboarding. In this video, I'm just going to be covering a little bit off topic in that the main laptop, the Dell XPS 15 that I use for recording all my Breadboarding Labs videos, had some instability over the last number of months with the Wi Fi dropping out from time to time. So, this video, I'm just going to cover how I have managed to fix this. So Breadboarding Labs is a site I set up a number of years ago and I'm just basically building microcomputer projects on soulless breadboards such as this one. This was the first one, the Nanocont 6809. And this was based on a 1981 Wireless World project. If you look at the URL on the top of the screen here in the description below, you can see playlists to see the whole series of videos for this particular project. So the problem I was seeing is that networks would disappear after, even after restarting the Wi-Fi adapter. So you'd be using the Wi-Fi and it would appear OK. Then it would show connecting and then it would say no Wi-Fi networks found. And quite often you would just find the website would disappear as you were using the PC. Now to start with, this was only intermittent and would only occur a couple of times a week. But during January, this became more prevalent and was happening even after reboots. The PC would only be stable for 15, 20 minutes and then it would actually disconnect from Wi-Fi. So it was becoming quite a problem and really I was having to use a wired network connection most of the time to get any work done. Some Wi-Fi problems are going to be down to your Wi-Fi setup, but I know that none of the other laptops or devices in the house had any problems with the Wi-Fi, so it was definitely not anything to do with the Wi-Fi network itself. It was to do with the laptop. And when you go into diagnose network problems, what the wizard will do is get you to restart the adapter. Now, to start with, that actually did sort the problem out most of the time, but over a period of time, that became even not a, a solution to the particular problem. And generally when this actually worked, then you would actually get the connection coming back. But as I said, during the middle of January, then even this was not actually fixing the problem. And when I looked in the Windows Event Viewer, could actually see that the killer wireless network adapter was recording some sort of uh, error messages in the system log. And in fact, this particular one here indicated that the device probably had a, an error itself. And when I did a bit of research on the net and having a look at uh, people who had similar problems, a lot of people seem to say that, yes, this was caused by the faulty Wi-Fi adapter, and it's just a little plug-in card that can be quite easily replaced. So I looked into what I could do to replace it, and I thought I'd do a few tests before I actually replace the card. So this is a quick speed test. So I was getting about uh, 215 megabits per second download. 52 megs upload is constrained by my broadband. So the broadband should be about 550 megabits per second. And we can see here that we've got the Wi-Fi 5 WPA3 killer wireless network adapter. It's running at five gigahertz. And at the moment, the links are running at uh, 400 megabits per second. So I research sent me to looking for an Intel AX210 wireless network card. Now I know you can get these much cheaper from China. If you're prepared to wait for a number of days or weeks, then you can probably get these for half this amount, but I needed this really pretty soon, so I ordered it and it arrived the next day. What I would advise you to do is to check beforehand that your Wi-Fi card is compatible with your CPU in that there are a number of different versions of these and you need to make sure that your particular card is compatible. I was lucky enough that there was a community forum entry here for the same model of XPS that I've got, the 9570, and that indicated the AX210 would actually work. And if you go to this link here, this actually came on the card with the Wi-Fi adapter. So the vendor who provides this provides the sort of links here. And there are various articles on here on establishing if your system is compatible. Unfortunately, this mainly handled upgrade of existing Intel cards to the new cards, not really the killer one that I had. And I also needed to look up what generation of CPU I had. So the generation for the 8750 was an eighth generation CPU. And these are a couple of the articles. I should include links in the description below where people have had problems, similar problems with this killer wireless card. And in fact, this one here said, I've got an AX210 with this model and it works okay. It was just asking about the six gigahertz. Now, in fact, I haven't got six gigahertz. The 6G in my Wi-Fi hotspot was just, I needed to set up an extra Wi-Fi network. So I just added one onto the 5G that I already had. 
So what you also need to do is to download the Intel Wi-Fi drivers and install them before installing the card and also download the Intel Bluetooth drivers and install them before installing the card. And the links on the support site take you to both the Wi-Fi download and the Bluetooth download. So I've downloaded both of those and installed them. And so what I'm going to do now is to show you the video of where I took the PC apart and replaced the card. Just note that because I wasn't using my normal PC, then I was using the microphone built into the desktop camera, which uh, doesn't have any noise cancelling or anything like that. So the audio quality may not be great, but apologies for that. So hopefully when we come back from installing the card, we'll just do a few tests and check that everything's working okay. So here's my five-year-old Dell XPS laptop which I use for most of the videos, but the Wi-Fi has become increasingly unreliable over the last couple of months. And so from looking online, it seems that we can replace the Wi-Fi Bluetooth adapter. And this is an Intel AX210, which apparently should be compatible. Now to replace this, to turn the laptop over, these screws here are all Torx head, security head, so we need a uh, an appropriate Torx screwdriver to do these. I think these are about six, seven pounds from Screwfix in the UK here. So what I'm gonna do is to take it off and then we'll look at replacing the Wi-Fi adapter. Let's get some little screws, right. Okay, so that lifts off fairly easy. I'd previously swapped out the uh, NVMe SSD here, so I'd already taken this apart some months ago. So you can see over here, this is where the existing Wi-Fi card is. Now we have to be a bit careful because there are very, very delicate connectors for the actual Wi-Fi antenna here that we need to be careful when taking off. So I'm just going to move the camera so we can see it a little bit more clearly. Now this is the most delicate part, removing the connectors for the antenna. Just remove the card. Get our replacement card out of the anti-static not I have earthed myself here and I'm on anti-static mat as well so hopefully static won't be a problem this supposedly is compatible with this so we just need to clip these back on it's not quite in it's quite tricky to get these connectors on once they're over and then give it a good push okay so both the antenna wires back on there we just need to put this piece back in I'm not quite sure if that's actually touching the aerial, but we'll see whether that works. Okay, so you're going to put the cover back on and do all the screws up.
Okay, so that's that. So what we'll do now is try and uh, turn it on and we'll switch back to my normal laptop. Apologies for the video quality. This is on a very old 13-year-old uh, laptop with a document camera and the microphone's uh, not set up for it. Okay, so the card has been installed and it's actually been working for a number of weeks now, in fact. So I didn't really want to do the video until I was absolutely sure that the card had solved all the problems. I haven't had any Wi-Fi problems since in the last sort of two or three weeks since I installed the card. So that was a big win. Now, just as far as actually testing the speed and the performance. So this is a speed test on my LAN with the laptop wired in. And you can see that they're getting about 550 megabits per second, which is what we pay for. And the upload again is constrained by the broadband speed. Now with the speed test now, we've got probably about twice the performance that I was getting previously. So that was good. And we can now see over here that we've got the Intel Wi-Fi AX210. And this is actually capable of working faster. And I have modified the Wi-Fi configuration a little bit so that it's actually able to make use of this extra speed and you can see the aggregated link speed now then rather than being 400 megabits per second is now 866 probably explains the improvement in performance and i just did a few tests with um, an iso image of uh, windows server 2012 iso image so using the killer wi-fi when it was working before i did the change it was downloading at about 20 megabytes per second peak I also tested the wired LAN connection in that my NAS is a about 12 year old Synology disk station so it's probably more constrained by the old spinning rust disks in there and the 12 year old hardware than uh, anything else on the network. And you can see now that with the AX210 I'm getting between 34 and 36 megabytes per second over the download so it's getting pretty close to a wired connection. So that's pretty much a success. So what that will hopefully allow me to do is to carry on doing the breadboard PC. So this is from one of the final videos in the breadboard PC series version 1. And this was showing it running MS-DOS and Windows 1, 2 and version 3 in the end here. And again if you want to see this project series there will be a playlist above up here and in the description below. And I'm currently working on doing version 2 of the breadboard PC where I'll look to try and make it a little bit tidier and neater than the project ended up at the end here. This was developed very organically one stage at a time. And I'm hoping that by knowing what the end state is at the beginning I'll be able to do this in a lot cleaner way. So. Thanks for watching. If you don't want to miss out on future videos, then if you hit subscribe, then you won't miss out on the Breadboard PC version 2. Thanks for watching.